Tonight's guest is my good friend Jack Canfield. In addition to being one of the stars of the hit DVD movie The Secret, Jack uh, is the originator and co-creator of the New York Times number one best-selling book series Chicken Soup for the Soul, which has sold over 100 million copies in 39 languages, the last I heard. But uh, Jack is, is certainly a lot more than that. He's one of the, the top uh, self-esteem and success trainers in the world. Uh, his new book, The Success Principles, is a runaway bestseller. He, he does a lot of uh, speaking for uh, corporations and other groups, and the, the list of uh, major corporations that have had him uh, as a consultant or a speaker is w really too long to list here. He's been on Oprah and Fox and Friends and CNN and, and countless other television shows. And uh, if, if we uh, gave his whole bio, we wouldn't have time to have a conversation. Uh, so, Jack, um, welcome. I'm really happy that you're here today. It's always fun to be with you, Bill. <clears throat> well, thank you for, for saying that. You know, uh, the first thing that occurs to me when I, you know, introduce you, as I have a few times, and tell... Uh, and I just told a few of the, of the things that you've done. The thing that always occurs to me is, uh, and I don't want to embarrass you by this, but you, there's something so human and warm about you and so approachable um, that uh, it's, it's almost hard for people to believe that you have had this mega success that you've had. How have you, how have you managed to maintain so much humanness in the face of all this success? Well, I always say that success or money amplifies who you already are. So if you're someone who is an idiot uh, and you make a lot of money, you can be a really big idiot. But uh, what happened for me was that I spent a lot of time before I was successful working on myself, taking lots of seminars. I think one year I went to 38 weekend workshops from gestalt therapy to transactional analysis, meditation, yoga, tai chi, you name it and um, literally uh, did a lot of clearing out of, and you know, as much of my ego and as much of my, um, you know, self-defeating behaviors, et cetera, that I could. So by the time I was successful, I don't feel like I'm any different now than I was, you know, when I became successful, other than I have a lot more money and a lot more influence. Exactly. And, you know, that's the same thing that's occurred to me as I, as I have become more successful is the influence it gives me really gives me an opportunity to do something good for the world, and I like being in that uh, in that position, and I, I'm sure you do too. Oh, I love it. I mean, I, we give away, you know, some years millions, some years hundreds of thousands of dollars to causes that we care about. Um, I'm able to open doors and get audiences with people. I remember one, uh, one year I was invited to speak to all the women members of Congress and the state legislatures, and the women governors over in Hawaii, they had a big convention, and I said, uh, well, what do you want me to talk about? And they said, whatever you'd like us to know. And so I got to, like, give my agenda for the nation to all the female legislators. I mean, what a kick. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that reminds me of when I was asked to speak uh, at the United Nations and, and got to speak to a lot of influential people uh, there. It's, it's really... Uh, I'm am I'm amazed. Uh, I I would imagine you probably feel that way too. Uh, I don't feel any different now than than when I was uh, making thirty thousand a year. No, I don't. I mean, I have a bigger house and more clothes and a nice car, and I can take my kids anywhere in the world that I want to take them. We were just talking mm -hmm. before we got on this call about you know, I just spent two weeks in Hawaii in a house on the beach, and uh, the year before that we were in Bali, and next year we're going to India and so forth, and. So I get to, to do that kind of thing, which I think is neat, and get really great medical care and eat organic food and all that. But other than that, you know, life goes on. You have to have some kind of driving vision or purpose that makes you get up in the morning. And for me, it's always been about, you know, empowering other people to live their dreams and then teaching other people how to teach that to others. So one of my big initiatives is, you know, educating educators, teachers in the high schools and middle schools of America to teach kids to believe in themselves because there's such low self-esteem in so many parts of our country that, uh, I mean, we just, you know, we've been watching uh, the whole thing that's been going on in Louisiana with the, the hurricanes, and you see so many people at the bottom end of the economic ladder who just don't feel very empowered, and my goal is to, uh, you know, continue to help people become empowered so that they can have the future they want. 
You know, I've <clears throat> there have been numbers a number of times in in my teaching where I will give uh, an example uh, of some successful person, and I get letters back from people saying, "Well, yeah, it's it's okay for you to talk about you know Napoleon Hill or Jack Canfield or or some other super successful person, uh, but they don't relate to it somehow. It's it's like someone that's really successful is so far away from where they are that it seems unreal to them. So I'm sort of, it's sort of occurring to me as I say this, that, that maybe we can do something as we talk here to help bridge that gap for people. Well, I know for me that, you know, there's a concept in psychology about gradient. And if you go too far above gradient, people can't relate. Uh, the example would be if you're making 50000 a year, and someone says, I can teach you how to make a hundred, that seems real. But if someone says, I can teach you how to make a million, that seems so far away, it's hard to believe. But if you're making 500,000 and someone says you can make a million, then it feels real. And for me, you know, only, God, what, you know, 20 years ago, I was making, you know, 50,000 a year. And then the next year I might have made 60 and then 75 and then 100 and then 140 and then 300 and then 400. So it's kind of like watching your own children grow. They don't look like they're getting bigger, but if you see someone you haven't seen for three years and they go from 11 to 14, they've gained like two feet, and you can hardly believe they've grown that much. So what you have to do is like, you know, if you keep looking at what's in front of you and doing that. And, you know, when I set out to write a best-selling book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, I didn't think it was going to sell, you know, eight million copies around the world. You know, I thought it might sell, you know, a million, which was our goal. And uh, as a result of that, we sold a million, and we said, well, what about making four million? And then one day we were sitting there, and we'd sold about 50 million books. We said, well, let's sell a billion books. Well, you know, if you'd have told me, let's sell a billion books, uh, when I did the first Chicken Soup book, I'd have told you you were crazy. So I think the main thing is to keep the horizon ahead of you always a little higher than what you are and keep looking toward that which you want to create. And eventually you find yourself standing on top of a mountain because you took one step at a time. Yeah, I I really relate to that. When I when I started Centerpoint, I was making about thirty thousand a year, and I thought, wow, if I could make another thirty thousand, I would really be in clover. Mm -hmm. And I I wrote out a goal uh, then that was much higher than that, uh, more than ten times higher than that, and my hand was shaking as I wrote it out because it seemed ridiculous to me, which was because it was over that gradient, and things just sort of went little by little until it kind of hit a, a place where it kind of started to grow geometrically. And it took me a little while to get used to the idea that I could really uh, could really make it really big. And then, you know, you and I met uh, in this uh, strategic coach that uh, Dan Sullivan has created, and uh, Dan floated the idea of making your business ten times bigger than it was, Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I said, well, yeah, why not? Whereas uh, several years before that, uh, it would have just seemed out of reach to me to do something like that. Well, as you remember, one of the things that Dan said that really made it believable for me, he said, take what you're making now. And I think at that time I was making, you know, several million dollars a year. And he said, go back to when you were making 10 times less. So that would have been $200,000 a year. And he said, when you were making 200000 if anyone had told you you could make $2 million, would you believe them? And I said inside, no, I, I wouldn't have. And he said, but you did, didn't you? He said, so if you couldn't believe that and you made it, imagine now where you are, multiply that by 10, and realize you can because you've already done it. You've already done a 10 times multiplier of your income. And that made it reasonable to me that I could do that. Well, and that's the way I, that's the way I felt, too. I thought, gee, I did this once before. I was 10 times less, and I did it. So... It's, and certainly other people have done it. One of the things that I say to myself a lot is, if somebody else has done it, it must be doable. And if they can do it, then I can do it too. And that belief has really propelled me a lot of times to uh, create things that at first would have seemed out of reach. Uh, 